Yeah, are you guys ready? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mass CEC's Wind Technology Testing Center. My name is Jennifer Deloisio. I am the CEO of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. It's great to be here today to welcome Governor Healy, Secretary Tutwiler, Secretary Tepper, Commissioner Riley, members of the AFL-CIO. I believe this is the first time for many of you to visit our Wind Technology Testing Center. We were proud to host the governor last month in New Bedford at our Marine Commerce Terminal, the only port in the country purpose-built for offshore wind. And today we're here at another nation-leading facility. Our Wind Technology Testing Center is the only one of its kind in North America and one of only six or seven in the world. This facility tests wind blades before they are put into production, enabling growth and innovation in blade manufacturing and supporting the build-out of the domestic supply chain of the offshore wind industry. From installation in New Bedford to innovation in Charlestown, we see the full life cycle of offshore wind happening in Massachusetts. It's a new frontier and one that will bring clean, reliable energy to our homes while bringing jobs to our residents. Whether it's working to construct turbines, connect solar panels, or install heat pumps, our clean energy transition will require rapid growth of a well-trained workforce. One crucial step to growing that and diversifying the pipeline for tomorrow's climate-critical workforce is expanding awareness of clean energy career opportunities. That's why we're thrilled to partner with our colleagues on early career programming to ensure that students are introduced to the skills and experiences that they need to uh, join our growing clean energy industry. This is an exciting evolution of Mass CEC's work in this area. Since 2011, we funded over 5,000 interns to work at over 600 different unique clean energy companies in Massachusetts and our equity workforce development programming ensures that clean energy careers are accessible to all. The Healy Driscoll administration's commitment to advancing high quality career pathway options for all high school students is one more reason why Massachusetts will continue to be a global leader in clean energy. In just a few short months, Governor Healy has demonstrated a bold vision in clean energy and climate. We're motivated by her dedication to sustainability and her commitment to Massachusetts leadership. It's my pleasure to welcome Governor Healy. Thanks, Jen. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Great to be with you, and we appreciate all the work that you and the great team at Mass Clean Energy Center do on so many fronts. This is another example of that. Um, I'm delighted to be joined here today by Rahul uh, Yarala, who is head of our Wind Technology Testing Center, and we're going to go on a tour in just a little bit and see how this all, all works. Um, but this is about collaboration and partnership, and we're joined today by our Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler, our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper. And I'm just uh, really, really thrilled to, uh, to be standing in this place. We've said for a long time that we want Massachusetts to be this country's epicenter for wind um, and all that's happening. And this is an example of this. this. This site in Charlestown is so essential to the infrastructure that we need for our clean energy future. There is uh, so much research and development that is happening just within these walls. Um, these blades, which are the length of a football field, undergo rigorous strength and durability testing. Uh, we also know that as things are growing we're going to need to grow this, this site and expand capacity here because the fact of the matter is companies from around the world are right now coming here to test and improve their wind technology, which will only help position Massachusetts so much better um, in terms of, of growing this, this global hub and this global industry. Um, in order to do it, we need the workforce for it, and we have dozens of clean energy employers across the state who are offering rewarding, good-paying jobs in this rapidly growing industry, but they need the skill workers to fill them. And that's where the Innovation Career Pathways program comes in. It's designed to give high school students, high school students, hands-on experience and coursework to help them uh, and prepare them for future careers. And today, we're excited to announce that we're adding a renewable energy 
portfolio, a, new, a renewable energy sector to that list of innovation pathways programming that is happening in high schools around the state. Um, this will be a pilot program open to public high schools beginning the next school year. Uh, we estimate uh, the goal of awarding the first cohort of designees in the following year and then starting enrollment in 26, uh, 25 and 26. Um, this is just the latest step in, step in our effort to reimagine high school and make sure that we're matching a learning experience with uh, readiness and preparation for careers that our students and young people um, need to fill and also will have great opportunities in filling. Um, delighted to, to be here. Again, I want to thank our secretaries Tutwiler and Tepper and their teams, Mass CEC, uh, as well as the center for all the work that is going on. And I also want to thank our, our great friend Chrissy uh, from the AFL-CIO, who notably is dressed in green and blue, representing the green and blue economy. And I just want to commend her and the partnership that our administration has had with the AFL-CIO and the trades as we think about the importance of apprenticeship, vocational training, career pathways. There have been incredible partnerships already and more that we want to build upon as we go forward together in this space. Again, great paying, great paying jobs, and I can tell you the state wants to be here helping to support and send um, and, and you know, further the groundwork for what needs to happen in terms of turning you know, education into vocation, into, into employment, and in the process, you know, making Massachusetts really the, the global hub for, for wind, um, at least in this country. So I want to thank you, Chrissy, uh, you and the team. And I'm going to turn it over to our friend now, uh, Secretary Pat Tutwiler from our uh, Department of Education. Also in blue, please. Yes. Good morning. Yes, I'd like the record to reflect that my tie <laughs> is green. Um, it is a great day to have a great day. I'm thrilled to be here with partners and friends uh, for this incredible announcement. Um, and, and thank you to the Massachusetts Clean Energy uh, Center's Wind Technology Testing Center um, for hosting us this morning. This, this is something we're deeply, deeply excited about. Innovation Career Pathways are one of the most exciting programs we're currently offering in our public schools. I'm thrilled to, uh, that we're able to expand it to now include applied, hands-on learning opportunities in clean energy. Earlier this month, uh, the governor and I, along with uh, the lieutenant governor, had an opportunity to uh, visit uh, and tour the Innovation Career Pathway classrooms at Chelmsford High School. And what I saw in those classrooms around engagement, personalization, and the golden, golden nugget in my, in my view, clear connections being made between what's happening in the classroom and the work world, we saw that in the most robust ways. All of this represents exactly the kinds of shifts that we want to see happen in our high schools across the state. Expanding the Innov Innovation Career Pathways program into clean energy uh, is a huge step forward in that goal. This new pathway option will deliver enhanced work-based learning and more engaging and relevant coursework in a forward-looking field, preparing our students to be the next generation of climate resiliency technicians and experts. All of this aligns seamlessly with our vision, as the governor just mentioned, uh, for high school and the Commonwealth, particularly our goal of reimagining high school. Innovation Career Pathways are the key piece of that plan. With equity at the core, we are working to see and honor the diverse needs, interests, and perspectives of all of our students. Reimagining high school involves redesigned learning experiences, creating career innovation, in, in, excuse me, creating innovative access points and pathways, centering opportunities for student engagement, increasing class relevancy, with work-based with work uh, instruction, and more. While this might sound like a lofty goal, and it is, I'm confident that by, that by working together, it is well within our ability to deliver, especially if we continue to foster collaborative partnerships with stakeholders across high school, institutions of higher learning, and our workforce partners, like MAST CEC. 
The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has developed this new clean energy pathway in partnership with Mass CEC to ensure that we are creating the highest quality renewable energy ed educational opportunities that we can and truly preparing students to enter this ever-growing field. The work that DESE does in this space, expanding the options available to students across the Commonwealth, is amazing. A lot of that work is due to someone who is here today, Senior Associate Commissioner Cliff Chuang. We'd like to thank you, sir, for your incredible work uh, in, this, in this space. So again, thank you to Mass CEC for your partnership in this work and to the Wind Technology Testing Center for hosting us today. And thank you to everyone in this space who has a hand in the continued expansion of these programs. It's an honor to work with you as we strive to deliver these career and college readiness opportunities like Innovation Pathways to even more students across the state of Massachusetts. And at this point, I would like to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper. Thank you so much. You know, it's um, great to be back here. I was actually here when this um, facility opened um, a long time ago now. Um, and, you know, it's really grown and has uh, doing even more work than it was doing back then. Jen was just telling me that this yellow piece here is a new equipment that was um, that we brought in so that you can tilt the, the blades um, so you can test the different winds and um, that was uh, done with the help of DOE grants so I'm um, really excited about all the action here at this uh, center which it which as Jen said is the only one in the country um, and a huge uh, pleasure to be with all of you as well you know since January uh, we've been working across our secretariats to grow our green workforce. That means giving residents access to programs, trainings, and courses that prepare them for a wide range of jobs. In inventing and in research in innovation and manufacturing from Berkshire to Barnstable, we're proud to be pioneering the nation's first commercial scale offshore wind project, and we need a well-trained and diverse workforce to help us grow this industry. To meet our climate goals, we'll need more than 29,000 additional jobs by 2030 and over 66,000 by 2050 just for the clean energy industry. To achieve this, we need to recruit and train people of all skill sets to build and maintain these clean energy projects and technologies. The opportunities for this industry are endless, and it's a huge bone for us in Massachusetts to be leading in this industry and promoting it. We must start now getting our children involved. You know, I'm the, I'm the mother of um, two teenage boys, so I know uh, how much they care about climate and how committed they are to trying to do something. And so part of our job um, as leaders is to make sure that they know that working in the clean energy industry is cool. And that if you ask, what can you do? What can one person do? You can work in the clean energy industry. And that's what we need to be encouraging our children to do. And, you know, young people really are at the forefront of climate action. So by giving high schoolers the tools and resources to pursue a career in the clean energy industry, we are setting Massachusetts up for success. Through the innovative pathway, we're expanding our reach and increasing equitable access for students who are seeking experience and connections in this sector. As we continue to feel the impacts of climate change, it is critical that every resource available, that we use every resource available to make progress on our climate goals and reach net zero emissions. We're not going to waste any opportunities, and Governor Healy's budget demonstrates our priorities and commitments. We're tripling the, the Mass CEC budget, and this funding will go towards job training. It is the partnership that we see here today that will help us achieve our emission limits, boost our economic development, and create new, equitable, and diverse workforce. Massachusetts workers are rising up to meet this moment, but they need our help to properly equip them with training, resources, and services they need to join the growing workforce. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Secretary Tepper, to you and the team at EEA, uh, Secretary Tutwiler, Commissioner Riley, and the team at Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed, uh, Jen Deloisio and everybody at MassCEC, and of course Chrissy Lynch and all of their friends in labor at the AFL-CIO. It is really exciting, and I hope you see you know, a lot of momentum, um, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement about what is happening right now, and even more so about what is possible across the state and this site in Boston. And again, thank you to the city of Boston for being here today. We appreciate the partnership um, on, on so many of these fronts, and especially when it comes to, to clean energy and what we need to do. Um, but this is a really great example of what is possible here in Massachusetts. We need to own it, we need to grow it, and in doing so, it'll redound to the benefit of residents and our entire commonwealth. So thank you. Happy to take any questions on topic to start for any of us. Otherwise, we'll move to the tour. All right, we're going to move to the tour. Oh, come on up, come on up. Um, I'm going to... I just want to introduce, of course, Chairman Jeff Roy, Massachusetts State Legislature, who um, has been a leader and a strong advocate in establishing our climate goals, our energy goals. Our teams, all of us, work very closely with Chairman Roy, and uh, we're excited to have you here today. You've been here, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you want to say anything? We're going to go on the tour. Well, let's take the tour. You think we'll take the tour? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to... exhausted from the budget getting better last night, so you don't want to hear anything from me. Oh, I want to hear good news from you on the budget. I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to hear good news on the budget. You just saw Secretary... You missed Secretary Tepper plug the uh, the tripling the investment in Mass CEC in our overall budget. So we're... Uh, we're working on that, but let's go. Let's go take the tour, um, and thanks everybody for coming here today. We here? Oh, that's great. Let's get a picture. Um, let's get a picture, Josh. She's already up here. Let's do it right here. Uh, great. Commissioner Riley, Paging. Commissioner Riley. <laughs> Jennifer Guadagnon, yes, please. Commissioner is deeply in here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, let's all, let's all come in Commissioner, right here. Commissioner Riley. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right here first on the count of three. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. 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 Thank you.